Emmanuel quickly is a Toronto Raptor, and it's widely expected he is going to be the lead guard of the future alongside Scotty Barn. So we're going to break down something that is an aspect of his game that's a little bit underrated. Um, in his opening press conference with Raptors media, Emmanuel quickly said that one thing that he wants to show here is that he's not just a scorer, that he's actually quite creative and his playmaking ability. So I wanted to break down kind of what passes he has in his game, what he's able to do, utilizing his threat of a three point shot and his speed to create looks for others. So we're going to break that all down for you guys here and we're going to go through his passes one by one. So let's get into it. So we're going to look at a couple passes that are probably going to be very common in the Raptor system. Obviously, Darko's offense is a lot of cutting, a lot of DHOs. Um, so we're going to look at some simple passes that Emmanuel quickly is able to currently make and what he's able to make out of drawing a second defender. So this first look is a dho so let's get right into it this first clip he's gonna come and he's got Bilal Koulibaly on it he's gonna fake the dho with evan fournier here and he sees that he's gonna turn the corner because this defender isn't up enough Bilal Koulibaly is leaning and he uses speed to beat Bilal Koulibaly here he feels Koulibaly on his back so he's gonna show the ball here to the shot blocker to lift the shot blocker jordan pool is now frozen because he doesn't know if the pass is going to go out to the corner here to miles mcbride miles mcbride a kind of iffy three-point shooter not really proven by any means yet but emmanuel quickly has passing options and because of his athleticism when he gets in the air he has two passing options he sees that julius randall has beaten the defender he also has a kick out to miles mcbride he sees jordan pool's already leaning the law cool ball he's gone he's underneath their net he's not going to be guarded and he gets this nice little shovel pass off to julius randall for the finish great pass out of the fake dho utilizing his speed and then making the reads and the options that he has available and taking his defender out of the play now this next play another fake dho but they're going to put this right into a pick and roll so you see here uh dante di vincenzo is rising quick quickly does a great job faking the dho and then attacking the body of di vincenzo's defender this helps di vincenzo then set his defender up to be screened by isaiah hartenstein and you see quickly here engages his own defender tristan thompson is attached to the screen but is looking at quickly on ball because there's nobody back at the rim now so he has engaged both these defenders and Dante DiVincenzo is going to come off this curl and you see here quickly comes back gets the rescreen from Hartenstein and makes this very very nice pass I just want to highlight this one-handed shovel pass right here into the small window that he's created while this defender is getting stuck on the screen his DiVincenzo DiVincenzo great low driving layup again not the hardest read obviously that's a set play it's not like that's like you know a difficult dynamic read that he's making but he's a making the read he's running the play on time he's getting his defender caught up he's engaging his defender the help defender making sure that the screener is his defender set up so the def the screener can hit that defender properly and create the space and then he's hitting the window to make that pass so another great pass coming out of a dho action the next pass we're going to look at here you see here so this play starts with Grimes and Hartenstein kind of running a pick and roll, but they cancel out of it. The ball gets set over, reversed to quickly on the opposite side. But look at Hartenstein on this play. So Hartenstein, as he comes off, seals his man, his defender, top side. So this middle is open. And look at quickly. Quickly is already looking at the play, engaging where the play is. You can see his head. He catches the ball. He gauges. He sees shooter out here. He sees Hartenstein flashing open the middle. And he throws instantly a pass and i want i want to show the head position his head position is looking back here and the reason this is important is because now this defender is kind of confused a should i be switching off here lori marketing already in help what should i be doing quickly throws this as a no look and he throws this in motion to hartenstein so instead of hitting hartenstein in the middle of the paint he throws it so hartenstein can catch it easily on the move gets to his right hand hartenstein's a right-handed player easy little hook shot quick pass effective to the cutter and on time now this next play this is a standard move by quickly what he'll use is his speed and his dribble to beat his initial defender he nice change of pace shows the ball bogdanovich goes for the ball fake and then he turns back around it's common you saw kyle lowry do this a lot you drive past your defender show the ball turn back around quickly he can hit this jumper and what he does is he draws the defender and look at this draws the defender in and he's already He's not, his eyes are looking this way to Dante DiVincenzo, to this. His defender is covering and he's drawn the second defender, but he's moving the ball and hitting the open man up top. This is a common pass that he makes. It's a regular read that he's able to make and one that he's able to create pretty easily because of his speed and because of how easily he's able to move himself around the floor with the ball. He's got a good handle that allows him to do that. 
and this ends up being an open three for Josh Hart. Now this play, this one's interesting to me. So this is gonna be, you're gonna see here, quickly he's gonna take the three, it's gonna be a miss. And Dante DiVincenzo gets the rebound, kicks out on the offensive rebound. Now, off the offensive rebound, goes back up to the shooter who just shot it. Commonly you see when this happens, that shooter is gonna take the shot. You see here, Emmanuel quickly has a lot of room, but look at his eyes again. He's scanning the floor, he's seeing where everyone is. He's gonna look to his left, he sees RJ Barrett's open, he sees Josh Hart's open, he sees this whole defense, and you can see he's leaning this way. Now, easy pass would be, hey, follow the motion of the ball, hit RJ, hit Hart, defense in rotation. But no, he realizes that this man who just got the offensive rebound is open, hits him for an easy read, open three. Now, Paul George has to commit there because quickly has a three-point shot, quickly looks. He has two guys that are kind of open. He can hit that pass, but he chooses the right decision. And I think it's that active decision-making because that entire play is only eight seconds long. So that active decision making is really important to see in a guard who's going to be, you know, responsible for getting the ball to the right spot on the right time. Now, this next play, now we are getting into transition quickly, super fast, great at getting the ball in transition and making the right read. And the thing that he does really well, and we'll highlight it here on this play, is he's very good at here. He gets the ball at the free throw line. So literally at the top of the key he gets the ball initiates transition and he's off the ball before he even cat crosses half the early hit ahead pass for a point guard especially for quickly who has a lot of speed and attracts a lot of defensive attention him hitting that early hit ahead pass is important because he realizes early on this possession catching from the free throw line one dribble and he's already looked ahead and seen that the defense is up and grimes has an easy layup to beat portis and we're gonna see this a couple times in transition this is another play in transition here quickly gets the rebound and takes off one dribble two dribble boom at half court he's already kicked it ahead to bear it hit this three and i want to go back on this play because here you're going to see right here he sees perzingis perzingis has turned around he can easily beat perzingis he sees rj up ahead but tatum's here commonly what a player would say here is okay you know what i'm gonna blow past perzingis draw this defender up and then make the kick out pass so instead of making the pass here he could have taken a couple extra dribbles forced tatum to commit after he blew past porzingis and then hit an open rj barrett instead quickly says no i'm gonna hit that hit ahead pass early he has not crossed half yet boom three seconds off the shot clock and you're already into a shot and that is those small micro advantages that you want to see your point guard able to create and the Raptors are a team that needs to play in transition, a team that needs to create, create every small advantage they can and take advantage of it. Pascal Siakam, how many times have we seen him out in transition, getting out early, and the point guard's not able to get that pass fast enough? Outside of Scotty Barnes, who is hitting Pascal Siakam fast enough on those hit-ahead passes? Now you have Emmanuel Quickly, who is very happy to throw that hit-ahead pass right away. So we go to this next play again, semi-transition in transition, and here, this, this one's beautiful. So I wanna rewind a little bit before we even get into it. Here he's at half court, he's scanning. He's scanning, he sees Dante DiVincenzo's running with him, he's got open space. He's got Josh Hart with him as well. Here, he pauses up here. Sees JT Thor, sees this defender, I think it's Booknet, I don't know, but he's in nowhere land. He fakes this bounce pass to DiVincenzo, uses the dribble. Now he looks up to go into a shot fake to engage JT Thor. This defender is now committed to DiVincenzo, seeing that ball for the possible passing lane. Thor is now committed to Emmanuel quickly going into his shot. You're gonna see Thor jump out. Emmanuel quickly, look at his eyes. Looking at the rim, beautiful shot fake, using the threat of his three-point shot. Again, plus 40% plus on pull-up threes. Hits Josh Hart, who has an open lane to get a dunk. And those are all within the span of maybe five seconds. He made all those decisions in transition. That is what you want to see from a lead guard. I think there's a lot of upside here in terms of how quick, quickly is able to make these decisions. So now we're getting to some of his pick and roll action. So here he's got a pick and roll. He's going to run Sam Hauser's up on top and look at, I want to know on all these pick and rolls that we're going to see how high up these are initiated because of his three point threat. Sam Hauser outside the three point line. Mitchell Robinson is going to come up to set a screen. Quickly has been called out. Sam Hauser is going to cut that off. Quickly is going to make him lean forward to the top side of the screen and then shoot back to under the screen. And now quickly, again, he's still above the three-point line when he's doing this, is now going to use Mitchell Robinson, who's slow rolling to the rim, 
and he's going to snake around him to get this defender out of the play. This defender is now behind quickly. He's behind Robinson. This defender has to get back in the play. Now, Porzingis has to be engaged. He has to guard quickly. So now you see Porzingis is shifting over. Robinson is still rolling. He's got a little arm on Hauser there. He's going to roll through. Tatum sees that Hauser's caught up. Hauser's got to get back in the play. So now Tatum's going to commit over to Robinson. Quickly goes into the shot flake. Shot fake. It's a good shooter. You got to commit to it. Both Hauser's going to commit to him. Porzingis has already shifted his weight over. Tatum's already shifted his weight over. But quickly goes right into the pass to RJ Baird for the three. And I'm going to play this back at full speed. And I want you to realize this is not quickly going to the shot fake, not feeling comfortable with the shot, then making a pass. This entire play is set up for him to make this pass. He is already processing the pass he has to make. Look at his eyes here. Comes off. He's faking. He glances. He sees these two. He sees RJ moving. He does the quick shot fake and his head turned instantly because he sees RJ open. Hits RJ, open three. And it's those couple seconds between those decisions that a Gary Trent Jr. who comes off there, does the shot fake, doesn't feel comfortable with the shot, then is looking for an escape on the pass. Quickly is not looking for an escape to pass. That entire play was made for him to make that pass to create the open three. This next pick and roll possession, I'm going to start at the very beginning again. He's at the logo to start. His three-point threat is so much. He's not even taking the screen. He's rejecting the screen, but his defender is caught up on top of the screen and quickly is able to, before getting to the top of the key, already has a defender on the hip. And he's really good at getting his defender on his hip and basically out of the play. Because what that forces him to do, the defense to do, is here. Hartenstein's going to roll. Tyson Daniels is going to commit over to him. But Brandon Ingram's now the low man. Since quickly has a defender on his hip, Brandon Ingram has to engage with quickly. Quickly does a great job engaging Brandon Ingram here with this two step. And what he does is a very common move he does. He makes this little shovel pass and then pops his body in as a screen. So he shovel passes to Josh Hart, who's rising up, screens off Brandon Ingram, bumps him. And now Josh Hart has all this space to take a three. If that reminds you of anyone, that's something that Kyle Lowry did quite often is, you know, use his body as a screen after the pass. It's something good playmakers do and quickly has shown the ability and pick and roll to understand how to use his body, not only just as a scoring threat, but also to create passing angles and then to use himself as a screener. So now the next one again here, we've got two screens. So we've got Josh Hart setting the initial screen. Hartenstein is then setting up for the second screen, but he's going to slip and go down again. Note how high this is. We are at the logo. Josh Hart sets the screen, quickly comes off the screen, and now look at this. Okongwu is meeting him above the three-point line. Quickly his head. Look at where his head is. He's not worried about where Trey Young is. His defender's out of the play. He's scanning to help defense. He is looking. All right, Okongwu is shifting over, and he's going to be specifically looking at Sadiq Bey because Sadiq Bey now has to make the decision. Is he going to tag Hartenstein on the roll, or is he going to hit Hart on the pop? And quickly comes off. He takes a scan. He looks, and he sees Hartenstein going past Bey, now Bay has to make a decision right here. One sec second later, now Bay's made a decision. He's gonna go to Hart. Hartenstein is open for the roll. So look at Quickly's eyes. He's got his corner three-point shooter here, and this is the help defender for Hartenstein. Now this doesn't end up affecting anything, but I'll show you what he does. As he makes this pass, he jumps to make the pass to freeze the defender, create another, create a good lane for him to make the pass. And you see Hartenstein's wide open in the middle, but his eyes, are looking this way he's looking at the long three-point shooter to hopefully just make this pass with a no look to hang up deandre hunter a couple seconds more doesn't end up really working because deandre hunter still is over but again at that point hartenstein's already in the heart of the paint and he's getting that layup beautiful from quickly and i just like again focus on his head position boom looks up scans the floor goes right into the pass no look that's what a lead playmaker does. Very comfortable in pick and roll. Here again, waits for Hart and time to set the screen. And again, I want to highlight where on the floor this position is. He's above the three-point line. Look at him using his own body to create the room so Hartenstein can set a good screen. This is another thing that's very important in your pick and roll ball handler. You've got to set your defender up to actually be screen. And he uses his body, the threat of spinning back the other way to set his defender up to be screened by Hartenstein. Hartenstein gets a good screen and quickly immediately goes into three point pull up shot fake. And what this does is you can see Tice already leaning to take away the drive here. 
he pump fakes look at tyson's feet look at his feet he's stumbling he's gone and quickly goes right into the bounce pass tyson is now out of the play tyson cannot cut off this roll because it's a blocking foul look at his, where his feet are he can't do anything and this goes right into the roll good finish by hartenstein and again why does this get created because this pick and roll is starting this far out outside the three-point line because quickly is a pull-up three-point shooting threat that Tice has to meet him up here instead of below the free throw line this defender has to be above the three-point line and that creates this entire space for the roll a threat the raptors have just not had this season even with fred van vliet this was tough because fred van vliet wasn't a quick rise three-point shooter quickly very much is now another simple pick and roll here uh, and we're now going to see teams they're going to trap quickly because they're like okay coming off the pick and roll we want to get the ball out of his hands so both charlotte hornets defenders commit to him they're pressuring him need to get the ball out of his hands quickly looks up he sees hartenstein's got a steal uh got, got a seal but he knows that he's got two defenders on him he sees one defender down here I means someone's got to be open he jumps to create room this is somewhere where quickly can probably catch himself in a little bit of trouble he does do a lot of jump passes to get out of traps it does however work for him uh time to time but you can see again a lot of athleticism he's well off the ground uses his great wingspan again i think he's a 6'9 wingspan guy which is very surprising and makes a pass to dante di vincenzo on the money hits the three great recognition of the trap where the help defense is and who's going to be open very quickly we're going to see more of him facing a trap here again against charlotte they trap him again he knows the coverage is a trap so he quickly reverses against the trap to open up his body because he doesn't want to get too far down here and then get stuck with the defender on his right shoulder so he opens up his body a little bit here to get the defender to flip so now he has all this room to make a pass instead of getting kind of trapped against the sideline great body positioning now he's looking sees defender here sees heart and sign cutting you've got opposite and you've got josh hart the first pass would be to Josh Hart. He sees that this defender is coming up. So he makes the jump pass, cross court, RJ Barrett, a little bit low, but more or less good enough on the money to hit the three. Funny how RJ Barrett's also a Toronto Raptor. Hey, hopefully we see more hit threes from RJ Barrett as well. Another possession, again, the Hornets. It's the fourth quarter. Again, the game's out of hand at this point. So it's not like it's really pressure situation, but he's getting trapped aggressively. This is a center trapping him to take away his vision. And then the guard. Look at how high up he is. He knows his big has a seal here. He sees that. He's obviously got Josh Hart as an engagement. He jumps and uses the pass fake to Hart. Look at this. This is a kind of a pump. I just want to highlight this. Here, he kind of pumps to get the lean to be able to create the angle for this pass. And he creates the pass to Jericho Sims. You'll see where Jericho Sims catches it right at the basket. He can catch and go straight up. Jericho Sims pump face and floats a little bit too far, but is able to get the finish. Again, there are obviously ways that he can optimize this, become a little bit more efficient at it, maybe break the trap. But the fact that he's able to be comfortable taking the trap on and still know that he can get a pass out of it is very promising. And I love seeing kind of his head motion as the trap is coming. He is being proactive and understanding where the help defenders are, where his exit options are, and then knowing that he can get to the pass because of his wingspan, because of his athleticism. So having gone through the footage, Emmanuel quickly, he's got a lot of passes in his arsenal. I think we're going to see a lot of it. Again, as a starter last year, he was averaging five and a half assists a game on 1.3 turnovers. Just given his threat of a three-point shot and just his speed and his athleticism, the wingspan, so he's able to make those passes over the long arms of the defender. I was just looking to see, hey, even though he was put in a scoring role with the Knicks, when he's had to pass, what is the process? And sure, there are a lot of simple passes that are one pass away, but you're seeing that when he's in more complex sets, whether it's a pick and roll where he's getting trapped or whether there's a double screen happening, he's not looking at one help defender. He's looking at the multiple help defenders. He knows where his exit options are when there's extra help coming towards him. And he's doing that like he's hitting the drive, knowing that there's going to be a pass. He's running the pick and roll and snaking it knowing that there's a player that's going to be lifted for the pass and not just looking to score so i think there is a lot of upside there obviously we're going to find out with the raptors now as emmanuel quickly will be our lead guard of the future so should be fun hopefully you guys took something away from this if you like this content give us a subscribe here but also subscribe to our Substack at prosandclaws.substack.com it's a link below in the bio thank you everybody and take care